You may be using Lightroom, but are you using it to its full capability? You know, even using hidden and unknown features in Lightroom can help you create better photos faster. And in this video, I'm gonna be revealing five hidden and unknown features in Lightroom that are gonna help you create better photos and save you massive amounts of time. Coming up. Welcome to the channel, my name is David Johnson. I provide you with the best tips and tools to help you level up the success and love for your photography, much like grasping the full capability of Lightroom with hidden and unknown tools like in this video. So if you're into that, hit the subscribe button now. Now, without wasting any time, let's just jump right into Lightroom and hit this off. The first tool that I wanna hit on is intersecting with a mask. Now in Lightroom, here's the masking tool, and it's basically some tool that you can use just like a paintbrush or a radial filter, anything like that. So for just a basic mask here, let's just go up and create a mask, select a brush, and just for general purposes, I'm just gonna paint in a mask into this dark stormy sky so you can see what that is. Now, normally that would be your mask here. That would be your adjustment. Let's say we could go down and create a clarity slider here to really boost the impact and how stormy those clouds actually are. But with that mask, I can now add to it or subtract from it using an intersect with mask tool. What I would come to is tools and I would go to intersect mask with and I could come in here and select any of these. Now I think to really show you how this can be impacted is using a radial gradient for this. Now we made a circular or oval pattern with this mask but since I'm gonna use an intersect with a radial gradient I'm just gonna come in and create like a smaller oval into that spot. And what I'm gonna look at here is I'm gonna scroll up to where my mask actually is. And you can see that the mask has changed from what it was. So if you remember, we painted in the entire sky. Now, since I've intersected that mask with a radial filter, what I can do is only have that mask show up where these two effects intersect one another. I think with the radial filter, one of the coolest things you can do to see this effect work is turn off the invert option. And now you can see that your mask is only affected where that invert is not within the mask. So here you can see you can do multiple things. Let's say I wanna do another intersection and go to tools, intersect mask with, and let's do a luminance range. So a luminance range is just how bright certain sections of that mask actually are. So what I'm gonna do is pull my range to something like, let's just say, let's do a medium range. So I'm gonna remove the darkest parts, and then with the brightest parts, I'm gonna come in here and adjust that as well. Now if I come up to my mask, I can see that it's changed once again, and now I also have that invert on my radial mask selected, I have the brush stroke that we originally made, and now I'm adding a luminance feature to that to only impact these mid-range gray tones that I'm adding into this photo. So there's a lot to do here with these masks that you can do. Yes, you can stack these masks on top of each other and have something similar, but I think intersecting with the mask can really take your masking and editing in Lightroom to the next level. Something that you used to be able to do only in Photoshop, you can now do in Lightroom. Let's move on to the next tip. The next tool has to do with the crop overlay, and you can get to the crop overlay tool by hitting the R key on your keyboard or coming up to this icon here. And if you see my crop, you can already see that it's probably much different than how yours looks. If you didn't know, you can actually hit the O key on your keyboard and affect which crop you're using and which overlay is shown on top of it. So I can hit the O key and toggle through all these different options. And kind of a power tip here on how to use this is you can actually use this to your advantage for your compositions. You know, using crops is one of the most underutilized hacks for improving your composition and landscape photography. You can easily use this feature that way by circling and cycling through these. So this is your classic rule of thirds, just making sure everything lines up. Here's a grid, here's a, a kind of an inverted or sideways rule of thirds that helps you see what areas are lining up within these sections that it's sectioning out. And what I like to do with this and how to use this best 
is just cycle through all of these by hitting the O key and just saying, okay, am I having equal amount of balance in all of these different quadrants and sections that are occurring within my photo? And if the answer is yes, then I have a cohesive composition there. If the answer is no, I just whittle it down and crop in a little bit until everything kind of lines up. The next tool is probably right in front of your face, but you may have not actually used that before. Let's come down here to the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders to see how these are affected, especially in the saturation section. So what I like to do with these is just adjust my saturation, but I like to do it with these little bullseye icons. If you just click this icon, you can hover over basically any color within this image and it's going to show up, as you see on the right side of the screen, as I move through this photo, different colors are being highlighted on that saturation tab. So what I'm gonna do is just come to, let's just keep it in the blues since we were working with the sky earlier. I'm just gonna click and drag up to increase that saturation and I can just drag down and then back up and just holding my key down, I can really adjust and impact how those blues look in this landscape. I think this is really beneficial because sometimes you don't know the exact color. I do a lot of guessing, especially with reds, oranges, and yellows. It's hard for me to separate those out with just my naked eye. If I use this, it's literally telling me which pixels are represented in which color and how I can affect those. That's a massive tip if you struggle with seeing colors in your images. And it's also a massive tip if you struggle with just moving a slider around, you can easily go through here and say, okay, I want my reds boosted, I want my yellows or my oranges decreased, and I want my blues increased a little bit more. There's so much we can do with this tool, and it's not just within the HSLs. You'll notice in each one of these tabs in Lightroom, that little bullseye icon shows up, and you can use that in any of those areas. Tip number four is one that I discovered a long time ago, and I actually use it with every single photo that I create. If you look at my screen, I'm all the way down in the calibration tab of Lightroom, and in here you have your shadows, red primary, green primary, and blue primary sliders. What I do with every single photo, if I'm dealing with color especially, is I click and hold and drag up the blue primary saturation slider, and you'll see I've already done it in this photo, but I can pull that up and it actually impacts the blues, greens, yellows, oranges, and reds all at the same time, but it does so in a very balanced way. So I can pull this up all the way so you can see that all of that is impacted. But what this does is it really does this in a nice way. If I were to pull the saturation up in each one of those sliders, it would look grossly overcooked and oversaturated, and the photo wouldn't even look realistic. So if I just drag that down to a realistic point, I can see that my blue saturations in the primary slider looks really good right about there. And all I have to do to impact all those colors is just lift that blue primary saturation slider and it's gonna impact all of those colors within my image. The last feature is just copying pasting all this, but I wanna show you the before and after view of where we started and where we're finishing with this photo with just a few very simple clicks and very simple adjustments that are gonna save you a ton of time. Now, if you're somebody going back to the library tab here, if you're somebody who takes a lot of different photos of the same location, what you can do with this is actually batch edit all of these to make those adjustments to every single photo that you took. So since I took a lot of different variations of this photo, let's just take these six right here, I was watching for very specific sections of light to hit that valley and taking a lot of frames to do so. So if I wanna just save tons of time, I can click on the first photo in that sequence, hold down my shift key, select the last section, and all I go to in the bottom right corner is sync settings. Since I want everything adjusted here, I'm gonna select check all, and then I'm gonna go to synchronize, and it's just gonna edit all of these and include all of those adjustments in there for me. And if you look here now, I have six very, very similar photos 
that have different lighting in the midsection of all of those because that's where I was watching. This saves you a ton of time. Imagine going through and editing each one of those photos. Now with just that sync settings button, you can easily go through and edit those. If you didn't want to adjust and impact everything with all of the adjustments that you made, let's say you didn't wanna do masking, you just uncheck masking and hit synchronize there. So these tips are gonna help you save tons of time when you're starting to edit in Lightroom. And to save you even more time, here's a playlist of more Lightroom tutorials that you can use to level up your photos. And here's another video that I think you're really gonna to like too.